This is the ultimate guide to increase and boost your FPS in Counter-Strike 2. This isn't just some lazy guide of me telling you to lower your resolution and get a new computer for better performance. This is a complete collection of every FPS setting and change you will need for optimization. I'm so confident this video will increase your FPS that I will give away any skin from my inventory you want if you do every fix and it doesn't improve your performance. Let's begin. The first fix is rebuilding your shader cache. Rebuilding your shader cache is a step some have undertaken after CS2 updates or driver updates that has helped some people. You're going to want to go into your program files, Steam, Steam apps, Common, Counter-Strike, Game, and then when you're here, you're going to see a bunch of folders. You're going to want to go into Core and then CSGO. When you're in here, you'll notice there's just a bunch of random files. Any of the ones which say shaders, you're going to just want to delete. For example, these shaders at the bottom, we're just going to straight up delete them. Now, after you do this, you just want to head over to your Counter-Strike properties and verify the game's files. After you do this, you're going to be wanting to look up your disk cleanup tool. Once you open it up and start running it, make sure you click off the DirectX shader cache. After you restart your PC, you're going to want to open up your Steam console. You just want to put this exact site into your web browser, which will let you know that this site wants to open up an application. It'll bring you right over here to the console on Steam, where here you're going to be wanting to put in Shader Build 730. Once you hit enter, and now when you run the game, you're going to want to hop into all the different practice maps and just run around the map to rebuild the shaders. Your first time around each map may just not be the best as you're simply just rebuilding it all. So this was a very easy fix to refresh a lot of your shaders. The next fix is to force enable threaded optimization in NVIDIA control panel. To do this, you just want to navigate and open up your NVIDIA control panel. When you're over on the manage 3D settings tab, head over to global settings scroll all the way down to threaded optimization and make sure you just flick it over to on previously in csgo the general rule was to set it to auto next up we have the resizable bar fix it's even available on amd gpus i believe it's something called smart access memory you're actually able to force enable the resizable bar by just updating your motherboard's BIOS. To do this, you just want to type in the name of your motherboard and then just downloads, and then you'll find the product page with your motherboard. If you're on an RTX 30 series or above, Nvidia has this resizable bar firmware update tool for you to use. So make sure you get this if you have one of these GPUs. Now when you're in your BIOS, you're going to be wanting to enable the resizable bar. Again, this is just board specific, but if your motherboard is anywhere near recent, this feature should be available. The name of the settings may vary, but you're going to want to set above 4G encoding to enabled and then set resizable bar support to enabled. After this, you're going to want to set the compatibility support module to disabled. There's even more complex ways for you to force enable your resizable bar using an NVIDIA profile inspector. But next, you're going to want to do CPU optimizations. You're going to want to begin by disabling your e-cores. To view more in a complete in-depth dive into this issue, there was this in-depth guide by Gamers Nexus. Now this is only applicable if you have an Intel CPU that is 12th, 13th, or 14th gen. You're going to want to go to your BIOS, navigate to, and locate the CPU core settings section. It will be marked along the lines with names like per P core control. If you have a setting called specific E core control or something similar, just set this to enabled. You will then see a list of the available E cores for your system. They will number between 0 to 16. It really just depends on what CPU you have. You want to want to go through each one and set its associated value to disabled. Once you do this, you can save and exit your BIOS. The next CPU optimization you can do is by disabling your Intel speed step and speed shift. To disable these, you're just going to want to enter into your BIOS, navigate to the CPU tweaking page, and head over to the CPU power management section. You'll now see various options called adjacent line prefetch, and make sure you set the values for both the speed step and the speed shift to disabled. If you can't find it, you should just be able to Google disable Intel speed step and then add in the name of your BIOS. Once you have it disabled, just make sure you save and exit out. The next CPU optimization you can do is undervolting, which is only applicable to those with very high-end CPUs and in most cases, Intel 12, 13, and 14th i9 CPUs. 
these will see the most benefit. In CS2, it's no longer about how many frames you can actually get, and is more about how consistently can you hit those frames. Undervolting helps reducing thermal load on the CPU, giving you more thermal headroom, and allowing any boost clocks to be maintained for the maximum window. As this varies drastically across hardware configuration, undervolting, plus the name of your motherboard or CPU, will give you easy results that you can follow. Now, the next fix we're going to go into is BIOS optimizations. For all these changes, there's plenty of guides online that you can find for your system. Just simply look up the specific change and the brand of your CPU or motherboard, or both. Number one is enabling XMP. This can be checked easily within the BIOS and whether it's enabled or not should be relatively obvious. Number two, disable CPU C states. This is essentially forcing your CPU to draw the maximum power at a given load state. Now this will consume more power but removes yet another boost feature leading to more consistent processes in both Windows and CS2. Number 3. Disable Pice Power Saving Features Again, this is hardware config specific. This is another variable to be removed when considering consistency when you're playing Counter-Strike 2. The next fix is altering your 3D settings, aka the NVIDIA control panel. This one absolutely depends on your system configuration, which it generally just boils down into two different presets. One is everything default, touch nothing, and the second is nothing default and you touch everything. Meeting somewhere in the middle was the best approach in CSGO, but this achieves nothing and usually gives you a worse state in CS2. So obviously try to play with it in your system to find which one's best for you. Here's what a profile would look like if you're doing everything default and touch nothing. You notice everything should be set to a default if you haven't already messed with things from maybe a previous guide. But you will notice threaded optimization, which we did talk about earlier, is still flicked on. That one is still pretty important to have. But for the next NVIDIA profile, which is nothing default, touch everything, it would look something like this with a lot of features off and only specific ones flicked on. And remember, threaded optimization is still turned on. The next fix is optimizing your Windows install. The first thing you can do is disable your communication sound tampering. All you're going to want to do is look for the control panel and open it up. When you click on the sound icon, this menu will pop up where you want to head over to communications. When you're here, you're going to want to flick on the tab which says do nothing. Then you can just apply this setting. To make sure you're doing it right, well, it should just be doing nothing. Now, the next fix is removing the Xbox game bar from your system. What you're going to want to do is head over into your gaming settings. When you're here, you're going to notice there's a tab specifically for the game bar. Once you do this, you should flick the tab to off and then restart your system. The next fix is optimizing your community maps that you have installed. This was a big problem in CSGO where when you would start loading up a bunch of workshop maps, it would lead to a loss of performance. Just make sure you do a verify of integrity of game files to ensure that you didn't delete anything crucial. What you're going to want to do is head over back into your Steam, Steam Apps, Workshop, and then go into your content and then 730. Here you will see all the different workshop maps that you have downloaded onto your files. You can just simply delete them and then when you reload into the maps, it will go ahead and download them once again. You can see for myself, I have a bunch which is obviously just slowly building up. Now the next Counter-Strike install optimization you can do is actually enabling full screen optimizations, which in 2024 actually work. You're going to want to head into your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Counter-Strike, Game, and then Bin folder. Here you will see Win64. What you're going to want to make sure you do is you right click on the CS2 application, head over into the Properties tab, and go over to Compatibility. And you're going to want to make sure this is not ticked. Just keep it just like this. If you have it ticked, it's most likely just from an extremely outdated guide. Now, the next fix you can do is just deleting unnecessary user data profiles. If you use a public PC or have Smurfs or use other accounts to play certain games, you will build up a number of entries in user data. While 98% of you probably won't be affected by this, in extreme cases, having a large number of these profiles can hamper Steam's performance. Again, every fix is just slowly removing every variable to fix your performance. 
To do this, you just want to go into your program files, Steam, and then user data. You'll see all the different folders of each profile. To know which folder is what profile, you just want to look up your following Steam IDs. As well as this, if you are somebody who has a controller config, you're going to be wanting to make sure you delete it. This is something which is known to tamper with performance. It should be located somewhere in your Steam, Steam apps, and workshop folder. The next fix is turning off mouse acceleration. You just want to go into your mouse settings, open up the additional mouse settings here at the bottom. It should open up this tab and then you're going to want to go into the pointer options. You're just going to make sure you have enhanced pointer precision ticked off. The next fix is clearing your download cache. To clear your Steam download cache, you're just going to want to launch Steam and when you're here, you're just going to want to click on Steam. Go to over to the settings. When you go around halfway down the page, you'll notice there's a setting called clear download cache. And well, as you'll notice, clearing the download cache might resolve issues downloading or starting apps. Just be noted that when you click this button, your Steam will most likely sign you out and close down. Now, the next fix is disabling your Steam overlay. To disable your Steam overlay, you just want to open up Steam, go back into the settings tab we just talked about. And when you're in the in game tab, what you're actually going to want to do is enable the Steam overlay to on. And then at the exact same time, you're going to want to open up your Counter-Strike properties. When both are opened, you're going to want to disable them side by side. Go Counter-Strike, and then you can disable the in-game overlay. This is because sometimes there's currently a bug where it doesn't actually disable. The next fix is optimizing your Steam library. When you head over into the Steam settings library tab, you're going to want to follow your settings so it looks something like this. For the low bandwidth mode, you're going to want to have it on. For the low performance mode, you're going to want to have it on. Then you can disable the community content so it doesn't load extras. You want to have that on. And then for the rest, you're going to want to actually disable them. Turn it off. And then for ready to play, you're going to want to turn that off. The first three on while the last three off. Fix number 14 is optimizing Steam to optimize itself. We are back in the Steam settings, but this time in the interface tab. At the bottom, there is a multiple settings you're going to want to have on, including enable GPU accelerator rendering and enable hardware video encoding. The rest are pretty much just up to you. Those ones matter the most. Now, the next fix you're going to want to do is disabling broadcasts. To do this, open up your Steam settings, go into broadcasts, and just make sure it's disabled. If you've already done the other steps like disabling your Steam overlay, well, it should hopefully already be off. Now, this next fix depends on what other games you play. If you only play Counter-Strike, I recommend you do it. If you play other games that require saves, maybe just skip this step. It's where you head into your Steam settings, and you're going to want to disable the Steam Cloud. Once again, if you play games which require saves, maybe just keep it enabled. The next fix is changing your Windows Power Plant. The default Windows Power Plant actively tries to save you power. To do this, you just want to look up power and then it will say choose a power plan. Now, the plans may vary depending on your equipment, but they'll all generally be the same. Default will be balanced and then you will see a few other plans, like maybe one that's completely for power saving and another one which is high performance. You're going to want to make sure you are using the high performance plan. If you have a plan which is specific for gaming, definitely use that one too. Now, to make sure you actually have it working correctly, you're going to want to click on change plan settings. And you want to click on change advanced settings and what you will see is pci express open this up you'll see wing state power management and you're going to want to make sure the setting is off the next fix is setting a packet buffer as part of a recent update we now have the interp setting back if you may have garbage internet and drop packets set it to one if you have even worse internet you're going to want to set it to two otherwise if you have fiber or internet that is very good then just leave it as zero as this value offers the least packet buffer delay we made an entire video of cs2 devs actually explaining this setting and what you should set it to for the next fix is you're going to want to use the dash threads launch option it's important to note that as part of one of the latest updates something has changed which partially removes the need for this launch option essentially what you're going to want to do is find out the number of physical cores you have not e cores only performance and add one you also don't want to use this if you have eCores disabled. We are just adding this in as the threads command has helped out CSGO performance in the past. For the next fix, you're going to want to make sure you have updated your drivers. There's no words, just make sure you go and do this. 
If you don't know how, just give it a simple Google search. The next fix is disabling the Discord overlay and hardware acceleration. If you're big into being a Discord kitten, then perhaps this one isn't for you. But for everyone else, Discord loves using resources. What you're going to want to do is head over into your Discord settings, the advanced tab, you'll notice there's hardware acceleration. All you're going to want to do is just make sure you turn it off. Go back into your settings, but this time click on the game overlay. Once again, you're just going to want to toggle this to off which should require a restart to be working properly. Now, the next fix you can do is to do a full driver reinstall using DDU to remove any traces of the previous driver. If you tried everything and nothing is working, this is worth a shot. This is something which is way too complicated to explain in this video, but there should be plenty of guides online that you can easily follow along. The next fix is following the Windows performance guides. Windows has a ton of garbage that is just always on the system. I'll leave a link to the Windows 10 and 11 optimization guide, as this in itself is extremely in-depth. There is then also the registry optimization guide, which is another one you should be looking over. The next fix is flushing your DNS. Just open up your command prompt, you can find it by searching for it. Next, you're going to want to input ipconfig slash flush DNS. It will then follow up with confirmation that it was successful. But the next fix is disabling all of your other sound devices. There's a known issue with your voice input device being set to default rather than the device itself. The current solution is you're going to want to launch CS2, go into your audio settings, and make sure the input and output devices are set. You're going to want to make sure that both are no longer set to default. Then you can open up the CS2 console and type voice device override sound device override and then what you can do is save the entire string this returns in a notepad file essentially by copying these strings and pasting them into your auto exec it will select the specified sound devices at launch every time this is specific to your system but it's very important if let's say sometimes when you launch cs2 your sound devices just reset for the next fix it is boost player contrast for some reason it just doesn't work People have complained that it hasn't been working since the beta, and well, surprise Pikachu face, it's still not working. Hopefully in the future this changes. You can either change this in your settings, or by adding it into your auto exec by r underscore player underscore visibility underscore mode zero. For AMD users with a 6000 series GPU that have constant stuttering, you're going to want to launch Steam. Go into the settings and select download. At the bottom, you'll notice there's two different settings. You're going to want to enable both of them. Now when you head over into your Counter-Strike 2 general launch options, you're going to want to add in dash Vulcan. Similar to the shaders fix we did earlier, you're just going to want to launch CS2 and build the shaders by running around on the different maps. The next fix is enabling NVIDIA Reflex. The current implementation of NVIDIA Reflex feels a little off when you're using Reflex Plus Boost. However, Reflex has helped people who are GPU bound which is why you should just test it and play with it depending on your exact system. So if you have followed every single one of these fixes, you should be seeing an improvement to your performance and game. Make sure you leave a like on this video and let me know how much your FPS has increased.